Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Powell of the Key Powell Equine Services. Today we're going to talk about a new approach to treating laminitis using a wooden clog. Why we like to use a clog is because it has a very beveled edge on all sides which allows a painful laminated course to move its feet in either direction without much uh, impact or restriction or tearing of the lamina. So there are two kinds of clogs we use. There's a the conventional one made out of compressed plywood and there's one that has a rubber sole that gives them better traction and also is very good for cushioning. They're very easy to apply. We use casting tape or we can use glue to attach them to the foot. They're very atraumatic to the foot so we don't have to worry about nailing hard nails into it and disrupting the lamina and causing horses pain. So here we are with Scad. She's a 20 year old Arabian. Has a slight case of laminitis. We saw in the videos when she was turning a little bit ouchy. And what we're going to do now is take some x-rays so we can figure out where we want to place the wooden clogs and it will show us putting the clogs on. Here's an x-ray of that same foot. We put a radio opaque marker on the front of the hoof wall extending from the coronary band down to the tip of the toe. That gives us an outer landmark that we can use for lining up the clog to know exactly where we want to break over to be. We drop a line from the top of the coronary band down to the sole and that gives us an approximation of where our breakover should be. If the breakover is too far forward after placing the shoe, we can then adjust it. So you might be wondering, how the heck are you going to apply this wood shoe to the horse's foot? I don't see any nail holes in that wooden clog. So, believe it or not, we are going to screw a couple of screws into the hoof wall and to the shoe to help stabilize it. To help me make sure I'm in the right place, I go from the back and get a little small screw and just do a little small hole. This way I know if I go and screw from the top side down, I, make, I want to make sure I'm not getting into any sensitive tissue. And it helps me, as you'll see later on, uh, screw from the outside into the shoe. I have my pilot holes drilled. I'm going to put the shoe on where I want it to. And then you need a helper. Here we have one of the screws, very small screws that we use for sheetrock, go into the pilot hole and into the shoe. And then one on the other side. So now we have some casting material to help hold this on. I have it over the other shoe here to give us a little bit of a maid. The biggest thing about it, we just don't want to get it on the hairline. But this fastens on, I go underneath the shoe a little bit. And just wrap around and around until it's all done. So as you can see, as I'm putting this casting tape on, that side ridge doesn't really make that big a deal anymore. So now you've seen the clog being applied, having the clog on is much like another shoe with a laminated course. We want to uh, reset the shoe every four to five weeks, sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more. I've been, I found that horses can get around the mud quite easily, sometimes it's a bit slippery on ice or snow. Um, like all laminated cases, we need to monitor turnout. Um, that's, the clog is not the only shoe we're using for laminated, there's a variety of shoes, but it is another tool in our arsenal that we find very helpful. Thank you very much. If you have any other questions about laminitis or some of the other services that we offer with foot care, check out our website at mpequine.com.